Welcome to the Phantom Group, and here tonight we're gonna talk about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And here tonight we have Dual Killing Anime. Hi. 301 Merlin Boss, or Merlin the Mighty, or Merlin Boss, what is it? I'm Merlin and I'm magical, and that's all you need to know. And say it's C3. Jotaro fucked your bitch. Yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> wow. And lastly, there's me, the anime hero. So, who wants to start first talking about the hype that is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Part three! Stardust Crusaders! Yeah! Fuck it! Yes! Okay, sorry. Oh, 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 I can go? Okay. Um, well, I just wanted to start off by saying that I'm so excited for part three. You know, you know, and, and you know, that's the most, you know, people say, oh, that's like the best part, man. That's where the, the, the trilogy or the story with Dio Brando ends at. And on a real note, yes, it's very good. It's very long extended. If you think about what's actually in the series, it's like a very long journey. I'm not going to ruin it for the people who haven't checked it out yet. <clears throat> you know, but it's, it's, it's good. And if you haven't seen it by now, I think watching the current anime and then going to season two with this part three will really make you appreciate why people are fans of this series. Jojo! <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, I mean, as you guys know, it's, uh, as you said, it's kind of the culmination of the whole Dio Brando arc with the Joe Stars. And I mean, it, it just has a lot of the best characters. Honestly, I think it has the best group of protagonists, as I said before, and, and honestly, all the parts. And you could have probably honestly ended the manga at that point if they really wanted to, because it did have this awesome conclusion and a sense of finality to it. Thankfully, they did not. But there is a certain completeness to those first three parts that I think that I really encourage people to see it if they have not. I mean, it's got some of the greatest characters, it's got a lot of the best villains, and it's admittedly a little lighter on the plot and complexity than some of the other arcs, but it has great pacing, great world building, and a lot of awesome action. Some of the most over-the-top ridiculous fights, and we see Dio as his most menacing here, and honestly, Joseph still is a major part of the story, even though he's a little more in the background. We get to see him as a mentor. And best of all, we have Jotaro, who is honestly, I think, one of the most badass protagonists in all of Shonen. Like, he's one of my favorites. He's awesome. He's cool. He kicks massive amounts of ass. And I just, like, there's so much tension with those those final fights. I mean, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but, like, it's it really is, you know, the best arc ever. The very least, one of the best arcs. And it's always been my personal favorite, you know, and uh, I would recommend watching the original OVAs if you want, checking out the new series, and then definitely read the manga up to that point to get full appreciation for it, like Dole said. But either way, check it out, because it's something you don't want to miss. Uh, yeah, I agree with more than what he said. I think it has the best group of protagonists out of any part. Um, you get Jotaro, who, like you said, is one of the most badass protagonists ever. Manly. And in my, and Manly, <laughs> and in my opinion, uh, the best Joe star, and my personal favorite Joe star also. And I, with, <laughs> with Jotaro's character, um, it's it's a hit or miss. Either you like his stoicness and his silentness, uh, or not silentness, silence. I think he's dull, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he could be a little dull for some people, so either you'll like that or you won't. He's not me. Um, <laughs> he's not Bill Good point. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's Jotaro. And then Joseph, who is the protagonist of the second part, comes back but doesn't really get as much shine so to speak he's not as uh quick or funny or even as witty really but uh he's still you know pretty bad he has that badass uh old old Storm guy sort of Swagger. yeah purple hermit and the, the, yeah all that stuff uh and um mohammed abdul uh just a yeah I'm right man. I'm awesome Lo character. love that dude yes uh, oh, yeah especially his son. and i just like his personality how like very altruistic he is and uh what he does like for uh, other people, pretty cool. And uh, Kaki Yoin, uh, oh, also one of my Hunter. favorites. Mill Hunter, yes. What's the Z? Hunter. See, what, what about Ponera? Come on, come on, man. Yeah, I was, I was getting there. I, was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I, I got to, I got to uh, represent for my man Kaki Yoin first. Then no. Kaki Yoin. <laughs> Kaki Yoin. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just a cool character, Kakyoin, and then uh, Ponoref. Um, Ponoref is sort of going to be like the guy I think most people like, because he's sort of like a knucklebind, cool borrow, that sort of character. Yeah, very comedic also. Very comedic and just uh, very like emotional, so to speak, and uh, very funny also. And um, Yeah, so I, I definitely think the, the main characters right. are good. and uh, Don't forget about the puppy. Oh, and Iggy, yes, Iggy. One of the most badass dogs ever mm -hmm. with the man face. <laughs> and 
what else do I need? Oh, and uh, Dio Brando. Dio Brando, um, he makes his return as the villain in this arc, and uh, this is really where he um, shines as, you know, the, the premier villain of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, part three. Um, in terms of the story, I'd say that uh, in comparison to some of the later parts, like five through eight, maybe the story isn't as uh, complex or even as good or as interesting, but uh, I think it's still a solid story since you get to follow their adventure and uh, where they travel and where they go. Um, so yeah, that's my take on it. Oh, and uh, it also introduces the important concept of stands, of stands, mm. and uh, that's that's you know that's a very big part of the JoJo's uh, meta series. And um, I don't think I talked about the henchmen, like well, Merlin just reminded me. <laughs> uh, the, the henchmen are pretty good. The henchmen are pretty good. Um, personally, I wouldn't put them on the Pillman level from part two. I wouldn't do that, but uh, they're still they're still pretty solid, and they still have you know. Very dark I don't know, and, uh, I don't know man. Darby the Gambler. Oh, man. Da- Darby, <laughs> da- Darby the Gambler's got swagger, man. Da- well, He's number one, man. Da- Dar- Darby, Darby and Vanilla Ice are, 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 are pretty Fucking cool. Fucking Ice, bro. Yeah. yeah. Fucking but uh, I, I also think the action, the action is um amazing. I just I just love best. all the stands. Yeah, I just love all the stands in here, all the fights. And uh, I guess in terms of the, I, I guess in terms of like the pacing and stuff. One thing I will warn you guys is that if you guys decide to read it, there's barely any rest in between fights. Oh, yeah. Barely any. It just uh, keeps going, man. It yeah. It, it's like a freight train. It just keeps going and it doesn't stop until you hit the end. So, it's extremely pacing. fast pacing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's fast but good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just my favorite part of JoJo's and, add and my one favorite make it. Add one piece to that puzzle? One piece? <laughs> Wait, one piece no, 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 let, me put, let me put my two cents in there real quick. Uh, I, it's really interesting since you guys didn't mention the interesting concepts they brought into how the villains slash allies came to a foot and how all their challenges came in the way. And it's going to be interesting to see how it's depicted in the anime because this is much more of a travel slash adventure. This is really the adventure. This is where it chronicles, and it feels like it's chronicling all together. Road and, trip. Yeah, road trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. Oh, it's I mean, really this, this series, this series has boats, plane crashes, multiple. Uh, <laughs> um, walks through deserts, uh, bad driving. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate road trip. Yes, man, and it, it's just fun. it gets fun. Pit stops. You know, <laughs> yeah. And a, like a Z said, like Z said, the action is back to back to back. So you'll never find a dull moment like for expedition. You never find like too much of that, but but it, it actually makes sense. It, it, it's the sequence of events that happens and how they explain it. Even how they introduce the villains, like... I remember there was a system how they introduced the villains, so it's like the people, like the destinies, the cars, yeah, the, the tarot cards, and then from there it went to the nine uh, Egyptian gods of prosperity. Yeah, yeah, they did, and then after, yeah. It has the full scope of destiny to the whole story. Right. Which is very, I feel, that sounds like an epic, like if you guys know European literature, it feels like an epic. It feels like it's actually chronicling the, the rivalry between Mr. Brando and then the Joe Stars. Mm. Part, part three, and it's, and it's settling all the stone men thing, all the, the vampire stuff. And, you know. Dude, it's, it's all about that culmination, man. Yeah. And, and this is why, you know, we're very excited and we're talking about this. I want to see it animated. Like, what I saw, when it went, when, when I saw season one of the anime. I was like, "Oh damn! Look, like Jonathan seems like it came. It felt like the beginning. And now I get to see the ending with Joseph. Oh, and one thing, one thing I think you guys said earlier that I kinda wasn't on board with was with the Joseph comment. I felt that we needed to show the change in Joseph in the series to see how it will affect." Jotaro and the plot down the line because if we would have had the same character after like 50 to 60 years, you know, it, you know, we would get the same thing. We would like Joseph, I think, a little more, but I don't think we would appreciate him later on, if you know what I mean, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know, I liked him. Uh, e- either way, I thought that they were different portrayals, but I thought he did well in the old mental. Yeah, 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 yeah. It felt, it felt, yeah. I liked well, it, kind of, it felt like it was time for the next, you know, Joe Star to kind of make yeah, his way. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm not, I'm not the, and don't let these guys, you know, out my judgment. I'm not the biggest Jotaro guy, but he's all right, you know. He's, he's a great, he's a great number four. 
<laughs> Damn. Damn. Great help. Huh? You know, let, let, him, let him stand back between... I'm sorry, I got some black people in the background. Mm. <laughs> he can stand behind Jocelyn, and he can stand behind, you know, Johnny, and he can stand behind my man, Giorno. But it's okay. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's that gangster fantasy, man. Yeah, that's gangster. There you go, but... Yeah. Wow. <laughs> This, this part is really going to chronicle a lot for you guys, and I hope you guys who haven't seen this series, check it out. And that's all I got to say. On my turn, man, because I've just been silent as fuck, just shouting random things about like... <laughs> so what do you No, 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 alright, alright. Well, the things you guys forgot to mention, though, is the horror. Like, the, like yeah. I feel like in part oh, 3, yeah. that's when the horror finally, like, exposed itself. I mean, for me, right. it before with part 1 with the vampires and all that, and the zombies, and in part 2 with the vampire hybrid pillar man but now in part three which is now we're dealing with humans with superpowers it really felt that he was paying homage to several horror films and certain like urban myths like remember okay. like that that car stand for example you know you know you probably heard of that legend story of the um of some ghost car that like drives by itself or something like that like probably was, yeah yeah the same thing goes that like the death 13 stand was essentially freddy krueger mm-hmm. and the um i mean we would have the creature from the black lagoon make an appearance in one of the in one of the stands Good point. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. That uh, part three, it, like it's so suspenseful, which is very noticeable. You look at the um, Darby fight. That one has so much suspense, and that's essentially what part three is going to be about. It's going to be a lot of action, a lot of like beatdowns of just rapid fire punching, a lot of fucked up moments, and then a couple of suspense. But one thing's for sure: expect a lot of animal cruelty when you jump into part three. Yeah. If you're, if you're sensitive about that, be warned. <laughs> You guys doing a core now? Yes, we're yeah. t- we're hyping up Stardust Crusaders. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, well, from reading from the art, man, it, it kind of felt like a video game. <laughs> like they fight, go to the next boss. Fight, go to the next boss. Character oh, no. development, meet new people, stands, fight, uh, and not enough deal. <laughs> <laughs> They're building a lot better. It was building him up, but he was like, he was kind of in the shadow, so... He was, man, because of the point where he was nicknamed Shadow Deal because of that. He, he was kind of, you know, manipulating things from the background. Oh, no, he was just chilling, man. He was just like, when he, like, under dead, like, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. Sometimes in part three, it felt like Power Rangers, you know, the big bad would send another monster, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then the monster would get bigger, and then they would eat the... <laughs> and then oh the monster... <laughs> Like, what what are we gonna do this time? We're gonna punch it. What about that one? We're gonna punch it. <laughs> and don't forget, we're about to duel. You get it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I don't know. Check it out, Stardust Crusaders. You know, it, it, it's pretty good. You know, pretty good. It doesn't have nothing on my part, but you know. You know what, Joe? Just calm down. Just, just calm down. Tell me. Fuck it, end it. bullshit. <laughs> 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 One of the most bullshit endings I've ever seen to a fight in my fucking life. It's like, you know what? You think you're ultimate badass power? Guess what? I have ultimate badass power. What the fuck? What the fuck? fucking makes sense. Yeah, that was, that was uh, hella cliche on that fight, though.